Our next speaker will unleash the power of animated position in Flutter. Pratik Sharma has 10 plus years of experience in mobile app development, majorly in Android, out of which last three, four years he has been working on Flutter as a developer and educator on YouTube channel Techie Blossom. Please welcome him on stage. Hello, can you hear me? Hi everyone, good morning. Fine. So, <coughs> I am Pratik Sharma. I run a channel called Techie Blossom. You, how many of you know me, by the way? Okay, great. So, uh, <coughs> and how many of you have tried animations before in Flutter or Android? Okay, how was your experience? Were they complex? Okay. Android XML? Okay. Thanks to declarative, we can easily now create uh, complex animations with simpler APIs. And that too, with Flutter SDK, the APIs are more simpler. Yet, yes, Jetpack Compose APIs are also better now without XML. So we'll see how we can create complex animations easily with simpler APIs. First, I will show you how we can do with Flutter. And at the end, I will sh give you one API which you can use to, u uh, to create same animations using Jetpack Compose. OK. <coughs> First of all, before I start, uh, this slide is a macOS desktop application which is developed in Flutter. So the animations that you will see here are actually running on the Flutter SDK. In Flutter, you can create animations using implicit APIs, implicit animation widget, or explicit animation widgets like using animation controller and animated builder together to bring the animations. So what is implicit animation widget? We will talk only about implicit today. So what is implicit animation widget? It's a single widget that provides complete animation for you and it manages the animation life cycle. It takes a set of initial values and a set of final values. When you start the animation, these initial values get converted to final values and you can see the animation running on the screen along a duration of your animation. These values can be color, size, position, or anything else. All of the implicit animation widgets extend a specific class called implicitly animated widget. This widget gives you two attributes, curve and duration. Of course, child is also one of the attribute, but what is duration? Duration is the complete uh, time for your animation that it starts and ends. But what and what is curve? Curve defines at a specific point in your animation at what speed the values are getting changed. So in a linear curve, the values will constantly change from 0 to 1 with a constant speed. For other curves, the values will differ at a specific point. Here are some of the examples of uh, implicit animation widgets. Any widget that starts with animated keyword, you can say they are anim implicit animation widgets. More of which you can find on flutter.dev on the widget catalog page under animations section. So these are some of them. We will talk about positioned and animated position. When you are using a stack in Flutter, all the widgets that are child of this stack start from top left corner which means if you have four or five widgets, they will overlap each other. So you might or you want, uh, you might be needing to start your widget from some other position. For that, you will use position widget. By giving these four attributes or six attributes, top, left, right, bottom, width and height, 
stack will be able to identify at which place this widget should start. So, the, uh, uh, and for example, uh, this is a white bordered rectangle. We consider this at a, as a body of a stack and the solid, rect a solid square is your position widget. It is placed 20 points from top and 100 points from left. So this is how you place a position widget. The other attributes are not required because the size of the box is fixed so it won't go into overflow. With animated position you can provide a duration and this box will move from left to right. Once I click on it. So why this happened? Because the left attribute which was initially 100, now it is 800. So over a duration of 1 or 2 seconds, this box has moved from left to right. When I click, click on the box again, it will move back. At a time, you can change multiple values also. For now, I am just changing one attribute, but you can change multiple attributes. The ultimate goal is to find the start text and start y of your position widget which you can do with the help of a rectangle also. Consider this rectangle. How many of you can see this rectangle completely? Okay, great. So offset x, y is the center of this rectangle and there is a width and height of a rectangle. Using these three attributes also, stack can identify from where this position widget should start. We will use position dot from rect and inside rect, we will create the rectangle from the center. Remember this point because we will discuss on it a little bit more. So once you supply offset width and height, we can also get the start x and start y. And this is the uh, key takeaway that you can uh, remember. Using the same technique, I was able to create a soccer ground where the length of this ground is sh and the width of the ground is sw. If I have to create the top rectangle, I I can define the width and height based on the dimensions of the ground. So for now I have hard coded 200 as the width and 100 as the height. To place this rectangle horizontally center on the ground, I will have to divide the width by 2 which I have done SW by 2 here and 50 as a constant because it's 100 height. So if I have to equally show on the, uh, I have to show full rectangle on the screen, I just have to divide 100 by 2. So it's 50. This is how I have defined the center of this rectangle. Now, I am using rect and rectangle terms a lot, which might confuse you that you can only use rectangle, but that's not the case. Every widget or any view has a width and height. So any widget can be used here. For example, here I have used a circle also. The, the child is changed to bordered circle. The center is changed and it is exactly in the center of the screen, width and height are same. So what happens with the animation widget? We just have to add a duration of 2 seconds and rest all things are same. Now when I click on this circle, it will move to a new position. What has changed? Width and height have not changed, so the only thing which is changed is the center, yes? Okay. So the only thing which has changed is the uh, center of this circle. It has changed from SW by 2, sorry, SW by 2 to SH by, uh, from SW by 2, SH by 2 to SW by 3, SH by 3. And we can see the animation on the screen. Moving on to the uh, same technique, we can now create formation switcher uh, in soccer where players are lying on the ground at a specific position and each player is at a different position. For example, in 4-3-3 formation, there are 4 defenders, 3 midfielders and 3 attackers. But when I change the formation to 5-3-2, the players have changed their position. Now when I do it quickly, the players are moving in between and they switch the places even before reaching to their final position. So this is how Flutter maps each of these positions from initial to final and it evaluates what will be its final position and what was its initial position. 
for uh, how does how does this has happened because there are only 11 players on the screen so each of these offsets are assigned to one player at a time okay when you uh, switch to 532 uh, offset 1 change changes to offset 12 and uh, this happens for other players also for example consider the example of left bottom player fourth in the 433 formation which is Jordi Alba here considering the zero coordinate or x coordinate as zero leave it but for the y coordinate currently Jordi Alba is placed at a three fourth height of your ground and when I change to 532 the y coordinate has changed to two third height which means the player has moved further up the pitch and these heights are uh, exact offset it's nothing it's not the position from top or from bottom it's just the offset on the screen how many have you understood this much okay great so <coughs> now we are moving a little bit more further to a complex one where you can see some randomly placed dots they are different colored uh, some of them are differently sized as well when I click on the animate button they will form a specific shape uh, any guesses what this going what is this going to form okay great so let's see the animation have uh, running okay so this has formed a uh, Indian flag and there are three rectangles one below each other there is a chakra in the center and there are some inner circles also that form line so it's just a normal mathematics fact that if dots are put in a in a same angle but at a different distance it will look like a line the same concept is being utilized here to create uh, these lines we will see this in detail I will show the code uh, not the editor but just the code to explain the important parts of this flag how many are you basically interested in this great so it would be little bit mathematical I don't know whether I would be able to explain everything in detail perfectly so that you understand in the one first first time so let's see first and foremost thing would be to create the single dot and place it anywhere in the screen okay so um, how many of uh, how many of you can see the code okay so I will scroll a little bit up okay okay so <coughs> I have used a sized box there I have given a size to it I have created the circle by using decorated box uh, by giving a shape to it and a color to it so we will be providing different colors like saffron green navy blue white and etc I have used box shadow to make it more attractive if there is no shadow it won't look good so I have added some shadow uh, by using blur radius and spread radius and the same colored shadow with some opacity and some offset this dot acts as a child to your animated position dot from red the second image and here I have specified a curve a fixed curve so all the dots are moving with with the help of this curve the duration is uh, constant two seconds but if you want to supply more duration to it which I did in the case of chakra where the duration was slightly greater than to create more exciting effect so I customized duration I used reg dot from center that we saw um, while creating the soccer field the offset that whatever I provide to this widget will be used here now to place this anywhere in the screen I can use a stack uh, I have used this AP widget which is the second widget AP widget with a custom uh, offset so that you can see a dot uh, at a, at some position on the screen now whenever you do these type of animations you have to have a, a subject width and a subject height because it's a mathematical calculation if we have these it would be easier to generate the offsets and not hard code the offsets so we will use maths here uh, just a general knowledge fact India flags uh, width and height ratio is one uh, is 3 is to 2 which means width is always 1.5 times the subject height so if we consider a hard coded width which is 360 the subject height would be 240 
you can generate this width also by using the screen size so that it scales as per your screen for simplicity i have just hard coded it here it's as per the mobile screen as of now um now we also need to place this flag horizontally center in the screen for that we need to uh, find startex dynamically because our width would be also found dynamically so i have just considered this small formula it's not important you can easily find this and start y is constant it will start 100 points from top so now we have to create a uh, first thing would be to create a horizontal line with the help of dots the total subject width if it is divided if it is divided by dot size you will get to know number of dots that you need in the horizontal direction i will run a loop on it basically i will use list dot generate to generate n number of dots and i will increase the x coordinate keeping the y coordinate constant this is how you will get some number of offsets that are required to draw the line then i will run a map on all of these offsets and generate the ap widget this is a general generic function next time i can use this function to create green white dots as well okay i have used getter so that uh, the code is more smaller in terms of generating ap widgets next we will repeat this to create uh, the rows in a vertical direction this time we will consider subject height if we divide subject height by dot size we will get to know how many dots are required in the vertical direction and because there are three rectangles we will divide it further by 3 so we will get to know how many rows are for separate how many for white how many for green and we will repeat the same stuff but this time with the help of for loop uh, this uh, getter all final dots is a collection of all your final dots means all the dots all the offsets that are required to create the flag this is that variable that will hold all these widgets uh by passing the row number here i can generate uh, and can i and in instead of static start by i will use a dy where i will just add row number into dot size every increment and then uh, one row will be created below uh, the first one and and so on so this is how it's done for creating saffron rectangle then we will repeat this step but this time i will start the loop not from zero but from rows per color because saffron ended somewhere on the seventh row as per how many rows are there i think eight so zero to seven one loop was uh, one saffron rectangle was there then i have to start from eight to 15 then 16 to 23 so this is how uh, the green rectangle is also created just changing the uh, start point and end point of your for loop you can uh, repeat it for green dots and white dots so we have a three colored flag now but the interesting part would be to create the circle with the help of dots at the end we want to achieve this at least okay for that first we will need to find center and radius because without center and radius we cannot create circle right so what would be the radius of chakra radius of chakra is this which means that half of the height of any of the rectangles okay which you can easily calculate you have to consider chakra dot size which is a different size from dot size it's slightly smaller and uh, you have to consider dot size by 2 because every dot is created using center and that's why i told you to put more uh, remember this at the later point because because we are creating with the help of center if i plot a dot with 0 0 center it would be half cut and this is the uh, reason I, we have to consider half of the dot size now what is the center center is nothing but center of your flag itself uh, so i have just divided the width by 2 for x coordinate and height by 2 for y coordinate okay how many of you can understand this or remember this we have learned this uh, way back in school okay yeah great well i forgot i searched on google and came up with this formula understood how this worked i left i i am good at maths but i am not doing right now so i forgot it i will try to explain it very easily we have to find a point at certain degree on the circle 
radius distance apart. Okay, for that there is a x y coordinate. Consider this. Uh, so uh, one more fact I forgot. In Indian flag, the chakra has 24 lines. Okay, so there are 360 degrees in a circle. So how many lines will be needed? 24. Of course, I said just now. But what is the degrees distance for these lines? We will divide 360 by 2, 24 and we will get 15. Correct? So, fourth point will be the 60 degree point. Okay? First point will be 15, 30, 45, 60 and so on until 345. Got it? So, how do we find a specific point on the circle, uh, on the circle circumference? Right? So, for that, uh, consider this point x, y. Draw some lines so that they intersect. They will form a right angle triangle and then we will have some x and y here. Now this is 60 degrees uh, using Pythagoras theorem. Uh, adjacent side divided by hypotenuse is your cos theta. So we can find x equal to radius into cos theta. And for sin theta we will have y value. So using y equals to radius into sin theta we will have x and y both. Now I just, I, I, as a result of this method, final chakra offsets, I will have a list of 24 offsets being generated. Uh, I will increment the degrees by 15 interval and create uh, x coordinate and y coordinate. But we see pi into 2 here. Because in Flirt as the Dart library and in Jetpack Compose as well, the, maths, uh, the math library uses radians. So you will have to convert your degrees that you have just found into radians. And this is the formula for that. We will multiply 2 pi and divide the every, everything by 360. I have added center dot dx as well and center dot dy as well. Why? Because if I don't do that, I, I am not aware of from where uh, my circle should start. If I keep it 0, it will start somewhere from here. But I have to consider that it is, a, it is center in the flag. It will generate a list of offsets and I will run a map on it and create AP widgets with navy blue dots. Now we will create inner circles. Uh, any guesses how is this done? Okay. So this is the center and this is the outer ring. This is the radius di uh, distance, right? The only thing which is changed here is the distance from center. So we will take a fraction of radius and rest everything is same. For example, if I multiply radius of, radius of chakra by 6 by 8, it is a 3 fourth of your radius. So you will get this ring. And if I take it more further to half of your radius, it is the innermost ring. Now we will generalize this using a loop. How many inner rings do we need? It's just uh, a random guess. I have taken rows required for your circle as that number. We can make lesser uh, number of inner rings, but the circle should be visible at least. And that is, the, uh, that is visible now. The circle is visible with this formula. So we will run a loop. Ring will be dynamic. It will be changing from 1 to 7. So 1 by, eight, one by 7. Uh, 1 by 7, 2 by 7, 3 by 7. This would be the distance uh, from uh, your center. So this is how the inner uh, circles are created and you can see the um, lines. This is understood. The last point would be to have some random dots. Now because we have created all dots mathematically, we know how many number of saffron dots are there, how many number of white and green dots are there and how many number of navy blue dots are there. So we will again generate same number of dots. For x coordinate we will consider sw int which is int, int uh, um, version of your screen width. I want to uh, uh, create, uh, create dots in the screen, not outside that. So I wanted to have int values. Uh, for y uh, you can have sh int which is screen height and this is a complete stack where we have uh, sorry, where is mouse? Okay. okay so this is a stack 
uh, there are two variables, all initial dots and all final dots. All final dots are the dots which form the flag. All initial dots are the collection of dots which are randomly placed. If your animation has not run, it will show randomly placed dots. If it has run, it will show the flag. And that's how you see the animation. So every time, uh, these dots will go to a new random position that I also don't know. They are not fixed. Um, can somebody help me? I cannot see here. I cannot control this screen. My mouse is not going there. Any questions until now? No? Yeah, please. Yeah, overlaps. This it's like yes, this one. That's it. Okay. Next we take in up full screen full screen with the next career. Disconnect करके connect कर लो। ठीक है। अभी भी mouse नहीं गया। Extra mode, extra mode पे चला गया। Duplicate करना पड़ेगा। अच्छा अच्छा। Main display हो गया। अरे हाँ। अंदर से हो गया ना? हाँ नहीं। वहाँ से fridge क्या हुआ है मैंने? One second. Hello. Uh, so, if I click on reset, uh, these dots will go into any random place. That was my last point. And uh, what about asymmetrical shapes? That was a symmetrical shape. We knew all the coordinates, everything. But what about asymmetrical? It's a lot more pain there. We have to plot dots uh, manually. Uh, any guesses what this will form? No? Okay, let me run it. Okay. Great. So I started from uh, top center from Kashmir and then moved to left and right and uh, plotted all the dots manually. I had a map behind uh, with some opacity so that I can easily do it uh, with good speed. Uh, and then uh, whatever number of dots were required for each color, I randomly generated same number of dots and used the same technique. So this was how, this is how it is done. But you might have a question uh, that it's done on a bigger screen, how will it render on the smaller screen? So you can generalize it by uh, generalizing the dot size and the gap between these dots. So that gap between these dots are not fixed. 
they are again calculated based on a dot gap. There is some fraction of dot gap which is used for horizontal line, uh, declining line or inclining line. So if you generalize that, you can easily do it for the smaller screens also. And now, <coughs> while I was doing this, I had no idea that I could do this much with just a simple implicit animation widget. So while doing this, I came across many ideas which can also be developed. Like one of the example could be to create an education app. Because I was creating rectangles, so I came to know that, okay, we can create an education app that can demonstrate how one shape gets converted to other shape like a square to rhombus or parallelogram to trapezium or any other, any other shape. Then another example I could think of was to create a digital clock. How many of you participated in the uh, flutter clock hackathon, something like that, right? How many of you saw one of the submissions where digits were, digits were getting transformed from one to other, well, right? So that was, I think that idea was created using this probably, I don't know, but we can achieve the same results. That clock that you are seeing on the top right corner is made using this technique only. So I have created these, do these uh, digits and when the ticker changes on each second, I change from one digit to other digit. And you can see it looks nice, right? By changing just the child or the dot in this case, I can achieve multiple results, which I will post later. Third example could be to simulate a soccer match. You saw we were quickly able to switch between formations. So suppose imagine a, a soccer game running for two minutes or four minutes and there is a ball. Of course, some of the players will have uh, movement towards the ball and that's what we can strategize and create a soccer game. It's, it's still early in my mind. I don't know whether it is possible, but we can think of it. Fourth example could be to create your own logo of your app and showcase on instead of your splash screen, right? So that would be more exciting to your users. And uh, yeah, that is it. Uh, I would like to thank you for listening me. <laughs> Last one, of course, you might have guessed it, probably. It's a deaf fest text, the letters. <laughs> so once you create these characters, you can create n number of uh, words from this. But of course, the font fam family you have to first choose, which is not always the same. So, and you can connect with me on Twitter, uh, and you can see my videos on uh, my channel. So thank you. Any questions now? No questions? Everything understood? No doubts? Thank you. Yeah. Yes. One is implicit and uh, another one is explicit. So my question is, uh, when to use which animation? Okay. <coughs> when you want more granular control on your animations, you should use animation controller together with animated builder, but e but efficiently. Um, because uh, more most of the time, you uh, the Flutter rebuilds widgets, right? So if your widget is too big and you are animating the whole widget, only two or three properties are getting changed. So try to use const widgets and try to use child of animated builder. Instead of everything returning from the builder, try to use that. That would be more efficient. And you can achieve same results using animation controller as well, but you will have many twins uh, in that regard. Suppose there were thousand dots. So you will have thousand twins. Of course, the twin will be a superset of, of all the beginning dots, beginning positions and end positions. So you can do that. I just forgot uh, one thing to add about Jetpack Compose. I told you that I will be giving you that API. So the API would be animate int offset as state. So using that, you can generate int offsets. But to create the chakra, you have to create, uh, you have to use offset, which takes in float. And uh, yeah, so your question is answered. Yeah, any more questions? I will show you the animation which I actually last night only I created this uh, in Android. So 
it should be quick let's see but uh, meanwhile we can you can ask me questions Okay. Okay. So when I click animate button, uh, it will form dots. The only thing which is left here is uh, the shadow. Because I am using canvas, I don't know how to put the shadows right. So let's see. <laughs> once i get to know that maybe it will have uh, the shadows also and i can easily say the number of lines are pretty lesser uh, than flutter but i might have used a different technique in both the things right so jetpack compose libraries are different from flutter they are not exactly same but with declarative way of coding we can now you know think of such animations in xml way i don't think we could <laughs> Even try this. Lottie files, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, no questions. Okay then, thanks for this. Yeah, please. Uh, yes, it uh, as of now it is compiled only for macOS, and it should run on web. Fine, I have not created it for uh, Windows or Linux. Uh, not tried on landscape mode in iPhone, but it should run. There yeah, is nothing that I have used macOS specific. It's just a Flutter application. So like how did you achieve the slide? So hmm. basically it was like the slides. There are two ways probably. Uh, I initially took all the slide pages as uh, a scaffold, but now I have taken indexed stack to place all my slides on top of each other. Uh, basically when you use index stack all the child widgets in the stack are not uh, built only one or two are built at a time so if the current index is zero so i uh, for that i uh, the first slide will be displayed so in an array i have provided all the uh, stacks all the slides and when i press next button using raw keyboard listener uh, we can actually override next and previous buttons by using that, we can switch between slides. So this is how I use this. For the explanation part, it was a stepper widget, simple in the vertical direction, and that's it. So basically, they are views, but then they are overlapping each other as you change yeah, the, the way, pages. Uh, see, uh, the bottom uh, app bar in your scaffold actually uses index stack. So it's the same concept. Not all the tabs will be loaded at the same time, only one first. The previous one and the next one will be loaded. So you don't load all the slides together. Once you click on the next, then only the current slide is displayed. But it is preloaded just before that slide. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And Hi. Uh, can we connect Python to this Flutter and show the animations there? Didn't try. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't try. I have heard somebody has done something. Uh, I mean, uh, Python, some framework is there which can create cross platform applications. Kiwi? Kiwi, uh, yeah, Kiwi is yeah. there. Yeah, I, I have not tried it. I mean, the code was, again, yeah, it's Kiwi Python. Reason, but how can we show animations to in Python? Like, there are anything? I have like not tried. <laughs> Anything else? Okay then. Uh, thanks for listening. You have been an uh, awesome crowd actually. Great. Thank you Pratik for showing us the power of animated position and such a detailed demo of the Indian flag.